Today is the day the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus honored his father and worshiped his father wherever he was. We should never feel ashamed wherever we are to worship God, to honor God. Amen. This coming a day that God is going to use each one of you on the streets, in the restaurants, wherever, to proclaim the truth. So let's get used to it. This is the day the Lord's made. Because our time is short, I'm just going to fire straight into what's on my heart. I, I'm, I'm going to be up front. Yesterday I wasn't well at all. I, I couldn't concentrate on a message. But I walk in here this morning and I see that happy birthday. So the Lord gave me a word when I read that. See, happy birthday. Hi. <laughs> Last week we celebrated two birthdays, right? <laughs> sister Delilah and our sister Anne. And today we're going to celebrate an even greater birthday. And Bruce. And Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> birthday of the church, right? Today's a greater birthday than last week. So, for those of you who aren't aware, today is Pentecost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So today's the birthday of the church, the New Testament church, Pentecost. The word Pentecost comes from this ancient word, Pentecoste, Hemera, which actually means the 50th day. So, seven weeks after the resurrection of Jesus, was the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This is a day that should excite us. The church needs to proclaim this day more. This is a day that should excite the church. This is up there with the birth of Christ and the death and resurrection of Christ. Because for the New Testament church, we wouldn't have it if it wasn't for Jesus. So this is a great day to celebrate. And, um, you know, at, at that time, Jesus gave his disciples a mission to carry out, a mission that was so important, a mission like no other mission that had been given before, and it had been given by God Almighty. And I guess this is where the Lord wants me to go today, because when I walked in here and I saw that, because I had said to my brother, I don't know what I'm going to share today. Usually I'm very well prepared, but we've had a hectic week. But I believe this is what the Lord wants me to tell you. You know, we stand at a time in history that was prophesied about. We stand at a time in history when our mission could not be more important. Mm-hmm. The most, probably the most important time in the New Testament church is right now. Yeah, right. A time when man is more concerned with things in life. And in fact, we should be more concerned with what's coming. I had a dream. This is a true dream. And in this dream, there was a gentle flowing stream. And on either side of the stream, there were fields. And the fields, it was a beautiful day. And I can see it now like it was right before my eyes. And the fields were swaying with high grass. And there was a gentle flowing stream going through the fields. And as I followed that stream, All I felt was peace until I got to near the end of the stream and there was a sinkhole. I don't know if this is possible, but this is what I saw in the dream. There was a sinkhole. You would know what that is. And all the water was going down into the sinkhole. And in the dream, as I leaned over the sinkhole, I could see an ocean, literally an ocean, and it was calm, but it was full of multitudes of people multitudes of people and people were crying out in the stream they were screaming out for help it's so real to me and I know the Lord wanted me to share this with you because there was not many people there to help these multitudes that is the mission of the New Testament church We've got to become bolder. I believe it's so relevant that we're here today. I really do in this place because I know often as Christians, we're fine in our buildings, we're fine hidden away, but when it comes to getting out in public, we feel ashamed often. We've got to break through that in this hour. We've got to break through that. We are not ashamed of the gospel of salvation. People were drowning everywhere. No one to rescue them. I hope it touches your heart like it touched mine. 
these people had been enjoying the flow of life, the, the, the stream. They weren't aware of what was ahead of them. They weren't aware of what was about to happen. And in Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 11, I wrote this down as I was leaving, actually, just as we was leaving Wake and I. Proverbs 24, verses 11 and 12. I want you to write it down or put it in your memory and hold on to this until the Lord comes. Deliver those who are drawn towards death and hold back those stumbling to the slaughter. Verse 12, And if you say, Surely we did not know this, does not he who weighs the hearts consider it? He who keeps your soul, does he not know it? And will he not render to each man according to his deeds? Deliver those who are drawn towards death. Proverbs chapter 24 and verses 11 to 12. Deliver those who are drawn towards death and hold them back, those who are stumbling, to the slaughter. Jesus commissioned to his disciples <coughs> to wait before they went out to spread the gospel. There was a reason for it. We all know it was to re receive the Holy Spirit. And of course, that's what this day mm. is all about, Pentecost, mm. the receiving of the Holy Spirit. What for? To give them power, to empower them to take that word, to take the truth and to give it to people and set those people free. Amen. Amen. Without this appointed power from the Holy Spirit, we could not do our job, but now we have no excuse. Mm. And the evidence the Holy Spirit had come upon them, of course, was they spoke in other tongues, which amazed those who heard it. And they thought they were drunk, the Bible tells us. No longer would man live under the law. Imagine that, 4,000 years of living under the law. 4,000 years of having to go to a priest and have your sins absolved. 4,000 years of not having the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And then suddenly he comes. Mm -hmm. And no longer do we have to live under law, but under grace. And God wrote his word on stone in the old covenant, but now he was writing it upon our hearts. Amen. To Orthodox believers in Britain and Ireland, their sister here would know, today is known as Whit Sunday, W-H-I-T, not white. Don't confuse it with white, which I believe the Samoan and Tongan people celebrate. Is that right? White Sunday? Yes, yeah. I, I don't know if that has anything to do with Pentecost or whether it's to do with children, I think, isn't it? It means wind. Yes. Means wind. Yeah. So in, in Ireland and England, they're actually celebrating Pentecost, and that's what they call it, with Sunday. And, and it is. It's the coming of the wind of the Holy Spirit. Mm. It was back in this day, the first gathering of believers of Jesus Christ, the Apostle Peter stood up amongst them in that small upper room Probably, I guess, it would have been about as big as this small room. And he testified, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Let's never get too used to what God has given us. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful gift, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We've all heard these messages before, but we, we, we can never go past them. Because to me, he is my everything. He is my all. He is my guide. He is my leader. He is my teacher. He is my counselor. He is everything. Mm. What a momentous occasion for us. What a momentous occasion. I don't think I've ever heard a message on Pentecost preached. That's just me. You may have heard plenty. I don't think I have. Mm. But what a momentous day to remind. Well, often we celebrate the birth and, and, and we should of Christ and the death and resurrection. But we should celebrate this. The giving of the Holy Spirit to the New yes. Testament church. Yes. Mm. No longer need we need to carry out rituals to obey God. And hearing those believers speaking in different tongues, different languages, the people ask, what have we got to do to be saved? What have we got to do to be saved? And Peter seizing the moment. Peter would always seize an opportunity. He stood up and he said, repent from your sins. Repent from your sins. Turn the opposite direction and follow Christ by being baptized in water. And then you shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. What a great day. <laughs> I would have loved to be been there. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I would have loved to have been at that occasion. Uh, Pentecost is a vivid illustration of the need for communities. I believe, you know, there's some people that say we don't need to gather. 
as, as a church group. I know we are individually the church, but here we have a pattern already set. There is a group of believers gathering here as a church group. The Bible says don't forsake the gathering of the saints, which means it's important that we do come together. And I know there's times in our life, I've had it, you've had it, when we feel, I've had enough of the church. I've had enough of those people. Okay. They've hurt me, they've done this, they've done that. And we want to give up. We want to retreat and, and, and isolate ourselves. Don't ever go there. I know probably all of you at some stage have been in that place. I have. We need each other. We need each other. We need community. And when we fall away from community, we're falling away from the Holy Spirit's leading. We're falling away from the Word of God. And the Spirit and the Word do not contradict each other. Let's keep in mind today our battle is not against people. <laughs> Who we wrestle not. Flesh and blood. Amen. Mm -hmm. Our battle is beings that we can't see most of the time. Mm. Uh, it's not people. I don't know about you, I've had a trying week. And I'd like to blame people because it's people that have made it trying. And I'm sure you also have had those opportunities this week. But let's not focus on man. Let's focus on God and, re and, and, and realize our battle is not with these people. It's not with these people that are stirring us up, that are annoying us, that are frustrating us, that are doing us harm. The enemy ha is using them. That's right. Let's, remember, let's always keep that in mind. The enemy is using those people, and sometimes we need to pull away from them. That's true. Sometimes we need to get out of that group that is annoying or hurting us or troubling us. Sometimes we have to pull away from even a relationship that is really, really bad and seek God. We don't stay in an abusive environment, but nevertheless, we need community. We need each other. God loves us. Imagine in heaven. God's not going to say, go and isolate yourself. We need each other. Don't worry, don't fret, for he is with us. Amen. He is with us. Amen. The Bible said he'll go ahead of us. And I think the wonderful thing about the Holy Spirit, he'll go ahead of us to rescue us from falling into sin. Mm -hmm. We've all fallen, and we all do from time to time, but the job of the Holy Spirit is to rescue us from that. Our job is to keep our eyes focused on the Lord. Yes. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. One of my favorites. Huh? The Apostle Paul reminds us in Romans 8, chapter 14, those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Mm. Those who are led by the Spirit. So I could probably add some words to this. I don't know. I will, but you can do what you want with it. Those who are not led by the Spirit maybe are not functioning as sons of God. Mm. They're children of God. Mm. But maybe they're not functioning as a son. Yeah? The leading of the Spirit was not for some elite group. Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice. It's not for some elite group. It's not for some super spiritual, knowledgeable Christian. The leading of the Spirit is for all of us. Mm -hmm. And it's a sign of our humility. Mm. The leading of the Holy Spirit in my life and your life is a sign that you've humbled yourself. That's what it's a sign of. Mm. Because you cannot be led unless you've humbled yourself. Mm. And the goal of the Spirit's leading was not for us to escape life's difficulties. I wish it was, but it's not for that purpose. It's not for us to escape suffering, but it's to, to enable us, please get this one, the job of the Holy Spirit is to enable us to conquer sin. Yeah. That is the purpose Jesus gave the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That is the purpose. So we could conquer sin. Amen. That is a message all in itself. Mm -hmm. huh? 
Amen. The leading of the Spirit could be said to be a process of sanctification as we advance towards conformity of Christ. That is his job. The challenge today I have for each one, including myself, is am I trying to serve God in my own strength? Mm. Or am I serving him through the power of the Holy Spirit? There's a very big difference. Mm. He gave us his spirit so we would enter into a place called rest. A place which can only be found by obeying his word. Mm. Pentecost reminds us God no longer dwells in buildings and temples made by human hands. But now he dwells within our very being. Mm. And I don't know about you, but I can't get my head around that. <laughs> That's so difficult for the human mind mm. to understand. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, a familiar verse. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost who dwells in you? I got to dwell on this throughout this week. This has been a scripture that I've pondered on nearly every day this week. We've all heard it many times. We've all got our application of what we believe it means. If we carry on reading the next verse, verse 17 of that same chapter, there's some very strong words Paul comes out with. Strong talk. He said, if anyone defiles it, the temple, God will destroy him. That's kind of scary words. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Okay, so that's strong words. In other words, God lives within me. If I destroy my temple, God will destroy me. It's not my words, it's the Bible's words. Okay, so we've all got our application what that means. For some it might be drugs, alcohol, abuse or whatever, okay, but... I got really convicted this week myself. I want to share this because I don't know if you've thought about this. This is where it really applied to me. Some of us don't rest our bodies sufficiently. Some of us don't take care of ourselves correctly. Now, according to my Bible, that's a sin. It's a sin that I've partaken on it many, many years in my life. We equate defiling the temple with sexual sin and all that stuff. And it is. It is. I'm not belittling that. But I think we need to look beyond that. We need to take care of what God's given us. Because sometimes we think we can just keep going in our own strength. And we can just do a little bit more and a little bit more when in fact He wants us to rest. He just wants to talk to us. He just wants to speak to us. I don't think there's one of you here today that's not guilty in this. I include myself. It's times we get so busy that we don't allow ourselves to pull back and hear what he's saying to us. I live in constant reminder as one that failed. serving God in my own strength. When we push our bodies too much, the ultimate outcome is going to be detrimental. We cannot carry what God has got for us then because we're weak or we're frail or we're sick. And we can't continue to do our mission. And that's what today's about. The mission that he has got for us. You know, busyness is a terrible thing sometimes it's not bad to be busy but it's bad to be busy to the point you're not hearing his voice and when we don't hear what he's telling us we're sinning and my bible says god will destroy me basically what if you look that up in the greek what it means is he'll hand you over to satan he'll give you what your desire is you want to be busy so busy that you don't have time for me 
I'll hand you over to the enemy. And he'll bring you to your knees. Hard word. I know most churches wouldn't want to preach that. But my Bible tells me that. And I love you enough to tell you today. Look after your bodies. Romans 12, verse 1. We all know what verse 2 says. <coughs> verse 1 says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, for this is your reasonable service to Him. And then he goes on, he said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But notice his priority here. He puts it on your body before he does your mind. I never thought about that till this week. Mm. He's putting the priority first on our bodies. Because if our bodies are not well, if we cannot function because we're so exhausted, if we cannot serve God in our mission, in the capacity he's called us, it doesn't matter how much you renew your mind, it's going to be no good to you. Mm. And sometimes we run to meeting, to meeting, to meeting, to meetings. And that's good, but it can also be bad. Because God's more interested in your body. He's more interested in your body. I guess it's hard to renew your mind when you're exhausted. I found that out this week. <laughs> Moving house is not a pleasurable thing. And I just felt exhausted all week. And it's just so hard to hear from the Lord. There's so much distraction. Ephesians 5, verse 28 to 29. I just want to quickly bring this word and you'll think this has got nothing to do with our theme but it's everything to do with it so husbands ought to love your wives as you do your own bodies and he who loves his wife loves himself now this has been taught in marriage seminars but I'm going to put a correct biblical spin on this for no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Paul is speaking here of a man that is walking correctly in God. When he says no one hates their own body, that's not true in the sense there's many who hate their own bodies. There's many who abuse themselves, who abuse their bodies. He's talking about a man that is upright before the Lord here. And while we're on the subject, many men expect their wives or even demand respect from them, yet they're not fulfilling the requirements God's given them. Have you heard this? I'm the head of the house. Oh, I've heard that a thousand times. I'm the head of this house. You'll do as I say. Because God made me the head of the house. Taken out of context. Mm -hmm. We should actually never have to say that. Mm -hmm. As a man. I'm really getting on the men here. But we should never have to say that. Why? Because our wife should want to submit. She should want to do those things that the Bible tells her. Without us having to make her. She should want to. If I lay down my desire for my wife, if I lay down my will for my wife, I never have to ask her to submit to me. Paul is giving an illustration of our bodies here, that we should love our bodies as we should love our wives, sorry, as we love our bodies. And there is an assumption here that we're all doing that when in fact maybe we're not. No one should hate their body, but many do. Why I'm bringing this is because the last week's been so difficult for me. And usually I bring out of my own life a message because if it's God speaking to me, I know he can use it speaking to you also. Let me give you some of the examples of people who hate their bodies. I mean, drug addicts, obviously. People who are chemically addicted. Eating disorders. Those type of things. 
sex addiction, pornography. And while I'm on that, why pornography? Because the Bible says he who looks upon a woman with lust. Sixty-eight percent of Christian pastors are hooked to pornography. That is the statistics that are currently out. You can get those online. This will give you an idea of how big this problem is. If you are addicted to pornography, you hate your body. That's what it's saying. This is what this is saying. There are only three categories of sin the enemy can use against us. Number one, the lust of the eyes. Number two, the lust of the flesh. Number three, the pride of life. Paul said, flee from sexual immorality. For all other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against himself. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit that is in you, whom you have from God, for you are not your own. You are not your own. That's big words, but it reminds me that my life doesn't belong to me. My body doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God because it's his temple. Do I take care of it? Your body, your spirit belong to God. He who sins against his body is destroying his own body. And I guess we could take that a step further. He who sins against his body is also trying to destroy God because you're destroying the Word of God. Mm. Why would we want to do that? Why would we want to destroy our body? I think the reason or the answer for it is because we're trying to live in our own strength. We're trying to deal with life in our own strength rather than functioning through the power of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost. Today is Pentecost. A reminder that you have the Holy Spirit to conquer these things in your life. Mm -hmm. How many leave this earth before their time because they have not loved themselves? They have not loved their bodies. The sad thing is, yes, we get to heaven, but we never complete our mission. Mm -hmm. Can we know how to love God if we don't love our body? That's my question. Psalm 139 in closing. A wonderful psalm. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Therefore cherish your life. Cherish your body because it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Cherish your body as a gift that's been given only for a season to look after. Always remembering it belongs to God and not to you. Mm. I want to ask you today, what does this message say to you? This has been a challenge all week for me. Take care of your body. Get enough sleep. Get enough rest. Eat correctly. Don't defile it. This is something that you're struggling with, that you need prayer with, prayer for. Because that's what the purpose of the body is. That we can stand with you and you can get a breakthrough. Some of us are carrying the scars of our past. I think probably all of us to some degree are carrying the scars of our bodily, bodily abuse. Huh? I know I am. Mm. And God requires us to respect it, to be attentive. I mean, we all like to think that we, we're going to have this wonderful miracle and everything that went wrong in the past is going to be wiped away. It's not always the way God works. Sometimes he just allows some of these things to linger on for a reason. Mm. Because it means we'll press into him. Mm -hmm. It means we'll trust him. God is not trying to make our lives easy as much as we've heard those type of messages. God is trying to make us more holy, more righteous, more useful for the kingdom. Respect and love the temple. Today is Pentecost. It's all about your temple mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for this brief message. Yeah. I pray you use it for your glory. 
Father, I thank you that you have made each one of us fearfully and wonderfully made. Only you could do this. Only the great and mighty God. Oh, Lord, forgive us that we've taken what you've given us for granted. And I pray this day that you restore us afresh, that we may remember that you're a gracious and a loving God and a forgiving God, and that the past can be put behind us and used to strengthen our future. We love you, Lord. We give you all the glory. And we commit the rest of this time to you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.